we've got a brand new ITL. We've got a superb engineer who approaches it from an artist's perspective. I can't wait to meet him. And a lot of exciting MixFest info. You know the place you're at? What place is that? Pensado's place. Yay. What's up, Herbert? What's up, Dave? Oh, man. Fun week. Fun week. Yeah. Um, you're busy. Man, we've been very busy. You know okay. what that is, Herb? Yeah. You, well, no, I don't. Explain it to me. This is uh, Mark over at BAE gave me this. Oh. He actually had the little hand flipped around the other way to be more PC, but I flipped it back around. Uh, Mark gave me uh, an incredible piece of gear. I, I, my, my Shadow Hills <laughs> compressor and my Mog audio EQs and my A designs from Peter Montesi are all now all now residing comfortably and wonderfully and happy in a. That's nice, in man. A You're making people luncheon. jealous. Oh man, <laughs> it's good to be the king. I'm telling you, <laughs> as Gene Simmons says, it's good to be me. But uh, yeah, we had a good week. Uh, Drew's got a little surprise he's been working on. He's been doing a. Uh, uh, production that's, that that uh, 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 is really really incredible. Okay. Down. I'm getting some kind of signal from Drew. Do you understand what that meant? No, no. We have a lot of information. Must be there. copyright issues or something involved. So, what are we talking about? All kinds of stuff. What would you like to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Let you all know. Uh, I'll talk yeah. about it. So, as usual, guys, make sure that uh, you know the homework drill by now. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube page, it's up on the screen. Uh, thanks for all your comments. Um, always shout outs to our, always shout outs to our strategic partner, v Vintage King, and our pals over there. In our chat room in our corner office is Darren Finley. Of course, our corner office is manned by the CJ, not the DJ. There's Darren's uh, stuff up on the screen. He'll be in there to answer questions for you. Uh, and of course, corner office is manned by our CJ, not the DJ, Drew Adams. There's Drew. There's Drew with a the point. There's points. Point in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you had your glasses on for that. And if amazing not, amazing what a new Supercuts $3 haircut kind of confidence it'll give you. That's a self-cut. In my bathroom for an hour and a half. Well, that's a self-cut. Um, uh, listen, going easy on Drew lately. You notice that I haven't made fun of him or anything. I know exactly. Uh, we got a great guest for you, but before we do oh, that, look, let's, to, let's just spend a couple minutes. Your response to Mixfest has been incredible. I cannot tell you how excited we are. We're gonna we're gonna tell you a couple couple guests we got confirmed for that here in two seconds. Uh, we've had such great reaction. We've had folks who are flying in. We've had requests to take it to different cities around, actually around the globe. We've had people who just want the USB key and the bag sent to them. Uh, it's just, it's just been incredible. Um, Dave, won't you tell them um, who our guests are gonna be? Man, uh, Eric Valentine is gonna Big. break down a, um, He's gonna be in our Q&A uh, &A section. Q&A section and kind of break down some of the things he's done and some, answer some of the questions that we didn't get a chance to do on the show. And then my buddy, my friend, Jean-Marie Horvat, is going to um, give us a, a, a lecture in logic. Yep. Neil, Neil and I were talking before the show, and we both want to learn logic and um, just can't seem to find the way. So um, anyway, Jean-Marie is going to help us do that. That's and, um, you know, one thing, one of the things I'm proud about um, what we're putting together from MixFest is the response that, that that our friends in the industry have mm -hmm. have shown in terms of of uh, contributing things like like one of the things that you and I were very con concerned about that we wanted to have happen was that we wanted a gift bag of real usable things mm -hmm. not 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 20% off for a whopper but something mm -hmm. that people actually were going to go buy and use mm -hmm. and and I feel I feel really good about the fact that the cost of admission is is nowhere near what, what the value value you get in the bag. The bags are so valuable. We have people buying tickets just to get the bag that can't even come to the show. It, it's and then a, and then another thing that I'm proud of is is all our buddies and friends at Avid and and, and McDSP and Vintage King, um, Naris, Naris. They're all giving stuff away live during the show. Yeah, it, it has been. Uh, I'm particularly excited because, uh, as you know, the legal department's been working on a way for me to be eligible to win this. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and so Dave now that I am eligible, right? I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so Drew still isn't eligible, by the way. And neither am I. Oh but God, but but you're the man. So it's called Pensado's Place. Uh, but to that aim, guys, it, it is a testament to our sponsors who are really talking about making sure that you're satisfied. Um, they have been absolutely, they stepped up without question. Um, we want this to be fun and educational and... and it's going to be a damn event, Herb. This thing's turning into like a... It's a mix fest. I think, I, I, I mean, I've, I've had people from TMZ sniffing around the house. Have Is you that noticed right? that they're hanging out at your house too? Uh, no, I haven't. And if I would, I would probably shoot them. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> My guy. Uh, so listen, the, um, obviously you can go to our website and there's been a lot of attention on our website. Thank you for that. You can buy tickets there. Um, another thing we're gonna do, um, we thought about this, we got some requests. Um, you can see it up on the screen. We are, you're, what you're gonna be able to find is that if you are a student, we have student pricing for you. So go to our website. We're going to get you a discounted ticket. You'll flash your student ID when you come to the event. We want to take care of you, make sure it happens. You see it at Pensados Place TV, uh, Pensados Place dot TV forward slash MixFest, or go to our website. So again, lots of stuff. We've got Dave. You're going to be able to mix with Dave. You've got the USB keys. You've got the gift bags. We're going to be giving away stuff during the stuff. Good things, too. Stuff that you really want. We've got a logic session for you. We've got Q&A. We've got a rock god and Eric Valentine. We want you to be able to get your questions answered. Hang. Spend some time. We're going to have fun. We're going to laugh. It's going to be a ball. It's at Los Angeles Recording School in their main theater. Thanks to Candace and Cecilia. I'm going to stop doing the stuff. Make sure you get there. Rock and roll. Now, let's get to our ITL, Dave. Oh, ITLs. Um, um, you guys have heard me say a million times, sometimes uh, uh, bus compression just confuses the hell out of me. I'm starting to get pretty good at it the last few years. And I was reading in Sound on Sound magazine, uh, Mike Thornton, who's a great writer, uh, he, he, he reviewed a bunch of um, um, single compressors and multi compressors, multi bands. And so this week you're, you're going to see five or six single bands. Next week we're going to do multi band. And uh, this is an expanded version of, of Mike's article. Go read that article on Sound on Sound. Run it, Will. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, now we've had a couple of ITLs that uh, I hope gave you some ideas and some new insight. On the ITL with the drum loops, um, I failed to mention, I rarely ever pile all of those things onto one loop. I just did that to be kind of a smart ass. But um, normally I would just use one or two of those techniques, excuse me, per loop, as opposed to all 200 of them on one loop. Sometimes I, I'm thinking about the creative things so, so deeply, sometimes I forget the technical things, and so you might find a a little blip there, a little something here, a little thing there. I don't I don't really care about that stuff. I just care about uh, just that it sounds good and it's moving people and it's selling millions of records. And I can't tell you the number of times Drew and Jason and Manny, and Dylan, all the guys that have worked with me, Andrew, have saved me because I've just overlook some kind of technical thing. It's just something I'm not that interested in. But when I am interested in something technical, I'm totally immersed in it. And uh, I've recently come to um, spend a lot of time on the Sound on Sound website. It's an incredible website, tons of information. Uh, Paul Tingen's articles are really good. Mike Thornton's articles are really good. All the guys over there, credit, credit to them, they've, they've just got a tremendous, tremendous resource. And then I also like Tape Op, a lot of information there. Of course, the, uh, the Gold Standard Mix Magazine, a lot of information there. And then Pro Sound Web, um, our old buddy Michael Brower's over there, and our other old buddy Brad Blackwood's over there. A lot of great information. But anyway, uh, this is the page on Sound on Sound that caught my attention this week. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure why I went there, but it's, the title of the article is called Pro Tools Mastering Limiter Shootout. Uh, these plugins are available pretty much for any format, not just Pro Tools. So I thought I'd take um, their list, add a few more to it. So I got about 10 uh, mastering limiters I'm going to show you. I'm not trying to show you how 
um, uh, like, Bruce, like Bruce Wedeen says, there's nothing like a good dog in the studio. Everybody, this is Moses. I don't know if you can see Moses. Dumb as a rock. I'm not, I'm not really showing you how to use each one of them. I'm just showing, showing, showing you an example of how I used them. We'll do five this week and five next week. We'll try to do the, um, the single band this week and multi-band in next week's ITLs. Uh, this is a song I just mixed for the Dream Record. Um, Pat Thrall, incredible engineer, producer, mixer in his own right, uh, did an incredible job on, on these tracks and I kind of finished up the mix and um, we're real proud of all of this. So here we go, let's jump in. Uh, our old standby, we'll start with L2. I'll just play a little piece of it just to give you a an idea of, of what we're doing. By the way, I I recorded each one of these and, and analyzed the waveform. I don't, I don't mind a little squared off wave here and there in the track. So, but there's no major distortion, even though you're going to see red, don't panic. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. Okay, that's L2, our old buddy. Uh, next, I'm going to show you Maxim. Um, to my way of thinking, this does okay. It's, 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 it wouldn't be my first choice, but good, uh, good all-around plug-in, maybe for an, uh, a, 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 an aux or a drum bus or something like that. This little histogram here, I really like a lot. It, uh, um, I wish, I wish all the plugins had that. I think I think it's very instructive, very usable. Okay, so this is with that. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. Okay, not bad. Okay, this is this is fast becoming a favorite of mine. This is Stephen Slate's plugin, FGX, I think he calls it. I got to tell you, I'm still learning this one, so uh, don't beat me up if I do something silly. And Stephen, please don't call me and say I did something wrong. I love this plugin. I'm just kind of learning it. It's just, it's it's uh, it's got a lot of abilities to uh, alter what you're doing. Steven, I saw Steven demonstrate this at AES. He's a genius with it. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. I, I, I wish you were mine. A lot of controls on this. You get low end detail, and this, this thing is a beast. I, I, I really like it. I'm, I'm still learning it, but. Uh, just because I don't know how to use it doesn't mean I don't use it. <laughs> Already had a few hits with it. Uh, this is the Oxford limiter. Uh, I don't. I don't. I remember Dave Cutch's show, uh, the mastering engineer out of New York, uh, Alicia Keys. Go to the. I, I think I told you. Go to the Sonox, uh, however you pronounce it, website. Look up Dave's um, face on their website, and he he posted some screenshots of his favorite settings. This is. Uh, not one of them. This is one I kind of modified myself. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. Got to tell you, this is this was quickly becoming a favorite of mine. I I I, I got a little involved with it after Dave mentioned it on the show, and I copied three of his presets off his off the Sonox website and I'm starting to feel pretty comfortable with this guy. Okay, this this plug in um, um, I tossed it in because I'm not really sure what it does, but I like it. I like it a lot. Maybe some other time, but damn I wish you were mine.
a lot of, a lot of controls on this. Okay. What I like, guys, the um, the L2 is my bread and butter. Um, anything that I put across the stereo bus is going to have to knock L2 out of that spot, and it just doesn't happen very often. Um, on the on the single band uh, bus compressors, I love the Sonox. Uh, it gives me a, a, another color. The L2 is gosh, just becoming part of modern sound, you know. Alex the Kid talked about it on the show. Uh, a lot of people talked about it on the show. And it's, 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 it's it just works. Um, the isotope in conjunction with um, the uh, multi, multi-band dynamic uh, section, that's a great combination, hard to beat. It sounds pretty good. Sound quality on the Sonox is good. Obviously, the the L2 is incredible. Um, Steven Steven Slate's plug-in, um, it's a beast. It it sounds good. It does what it needs to do. Um, you can get stuff so loud with that without altering or changing your original sound, which is kind of the concept behind these limiters. All right. Okay. That's 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 uh, that's it for today. Uh, we we kind of flew by, so um, if you want me to go into detail, just hit me up on Facebook, on Pensada's Place, and, and let me know, and I'll spend some time and some detail on what you want me to. Now, next week, we're going to go over the multiband compressors. They're the bad boys. They're the Ferraris of the of the bunch, and we got several of those for you, and those those are those are quickly and rapidly becoming my favorite things to put across the stereo bus. I mean, if one L2 is good, a hundred's better, right? So you got the L316, uh, you got the L multi, L3 multi, multi, man, I'll tell you next week what it is. It's, it's, it's four band or five band or something. It's becoming one of my favorites. All right, guys, see you next week. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but on the Discovery Channel, none of the nature shows are narrated by southern people <laughs> like hey y'all look at that gazelle just got eaten by that lion <laughs> but you know what? I, I wish i had a british accent it's so better <laughs> unfortunately uh, a lot of the I repo just, shows are <laughs> I, I love you guys you guys give me credibility and believe what i say and i and i'm listening to myself and i don't even believe it i sound like such a geek man um in in keeping with the tradition of Pensada's Place and Herbert's Hideout, the two shows that we do on, on this network, um, I've got another good friend on the show today. Actually, Neil and I have known each other for 20 years. And Herb, when Neil won his Grammy, we went together that, oh, that cool. year. To, and he beat me out. I think I, I, think I was nominated for uh, Justin Timberlake, I think, yeah, wasn't it, Neil? It was. But anyway, check this out, guys. Nicki Minaj, Outcast, the good Outcast record, and he also did Hey Ya. We've got a little special story planned for you about Hey Ya. Nelly Furtado, TLC Waterfalls. Whew. I mean, Organized Noise, those guys are incredible. He's done, worked with all of them. Lil Wayne, Robin Thicke, Stevie Wonder, um, Barkley, Travis. Travis um, Who am I leaving out? Did I say Lil Wayne? You did. Incredible, incredible body of work. Um, real, really, someone that I admire on any number of levels. Neil, thanks for coming by, my friend. Neil Pogue. Neil Pogue. How did yeah. you get ice? How did you get iced tea and we get tap water? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. It's great stuff because he did Travis Barker. <laughs> <laughs> you did so. Anyways. How do you know I didn't? Huh? How do you know I didn't? I'm your manager. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Okay, cool. On to Neil. <laughs> Neil, um, mm -hmm. I love the story about when uh, Andre came to you and, and, and you guys were, 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 were you know, starting to work on the uh, um, speaker box record. And he said, listen to this song. And he had a mm -hmm. rented... Uh, Mini Cooper, and you guys Cooper, drove yeah. around, and right. what? And he played, he played in the the rough mix of that. Right. Was it a rough mix? Rough mix of, of the whole Tell record. Story. Yeah. Did you? Did the, you? What just, was so funny about the Mini Cooper? It, it it had a British flag on the top of you know how some had their British flag mm -hmm. on top. So mm -hmm. it's pretty funny. Um, we pretty much we met at a 
what was that place? You know that place you get the smoothies at? What was that? Jamba Juice or something? Jamba, yeah, we met at Jamba off of, uh, off of, uh, was it Vineland and Vin Ventura? Mm -hmm. There, you know, where that big Ralph's is. And mm -hmm. We met over there, and he come pulls he pulls up in this little Cooper because he's always the type of guy who wants to do something different. So mm -hmm. he pulls up in this little Cooper, and we jump in and we go over Laurel Canyon, take a ride, and he's playing me all these great tracks like Prototype and all those, and, and then he played me this song, which it was, you know, it was the most different track on the whole demo reel, and I heard these guitars and. It was just the first verse and the chorus. And he fast forwarded and turned it off and went to another. Said, no, no, no. I said, go back. I want to hit that again. He played it. And I said, OK, that's, that's your first single. And he was like, what? I said, yeah. I said, finish that. He thought I was crazy. He started laughing at me. I said, that's your first single. He was like, nah, come on, man. I said, finish that. I said, I want you to finish that in two weeks. I'll give you two weeks. I said, I'm going to call you. And and I, I'm gonna stay the on Rick you until that you close finish to it. Needing to be turned in, huh? Yeah, he he wasn't really thinking about the record. He thought it was just you know another track. It was it was so different. He probably thought nobody would really love it. He probably loved it, you know. But I said finish it, and I I did badger him for two weeks. I called wow. him on on the regular. He would laugh, say, "Come on, I'm almost done, man. All right, right, I'm finished." I said finish that second verse, and so wow. when he finally finished it, I was like, "Yo, this is a hit. I'm telling you." And so, uh, first I time know. I heard that record, yeah. freak me out. My, yeah. So it was Hey Ya. It was Hey Ya. Yeah, yeah it was Hey Ya. Uh, it was exactly. Hey Ya, yeah. Right. By the way, uh, Andre and I went to the same high school. We're both, really? Yeah, okay. we're both Southwest DeKalb Panthers. Mm. But uh, one of my good buddies from Cameo played all, all over that record, co produced some stuff, Kevin Kendrick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of them. Definitely. I, I can't say one of the best. I think he, Kevin is the best keyboard player I've ever heard. Right. I think Crow. the bass that, player played on that track as well. Um, the guy from the cameo, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Man, those guys are so talented. Yeah. What a great story. Mm. And, and and as it was, you guys worked all night, mixed all night, and just barely made it to mastering by oh, nine yeah. or ten the next morning. Oh yeah, that was. But you know what? Those are type of records that that become hits. When, when things go smooth, it, it worries me. Mm -hmm. You know, when things are really like just hectic, that's when you know you, that you have something, you know. Something disruptive. Yeah, you need that. You need that yin and yang. You need that, you know. Mm -hmm. Does that push you creatively sometimes? It, it does, but sometimes don't you, you don't, head. but sometimes you're un unconscious of it too. Right, right. You don't right. really know that you, that you are until it's it. done and then you're, you're kind of like, oh, yeah. glad that's over. Yeah, I'm that. And then you see that, okay, wow, we were pushed to the limit. Yeah, I it think makes you, you and I are the same in the, in the, in the, Sometimes you're sad when you finish. It's the process is yeah. so much fun, and the people right. you're working with are so incredibly right. creative. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you're not sad when it's done, but but because because mm -hmm. you're always looking forward to your next project. But those are special moments. Mm -hmm. The way you describe the process, um, it seems like like you embody what I've kind of thought as the the new engineer the engineer for the for the 2000 teens mm -hmm. in the sense that you started out as an artist you were a drummer you were, you were in a bunch of bands and then you write you produce mm -hmm. and so when you when you step up to um, mix a record you're bringing a lot of diversified abilities and talents and taste to the process mm -hmm. and uh, I see that as is the the modern engineer being that way mm -hmm. um, because now so much of producing for a producer is mixing and so in order for us to be able to help them as much as possible we have to have those kind of sensibilities am, am i onto something or? yeah definitely because definitely. you've always you've always approached <coughs> mixing mm -hmm. not as not trying to usurp the authority of the producer but right. you've always given a, uh, the client things to choose mm -hmm. from and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think being a drummer helped me because I always a admired drummer producers like uh, Phil Collins and Narada Michael Walden and Don Henley and uh, Larry Blackman. You know, I'm a big Larry, Larry Blackman fan. Mm -hmm. Me too. Um, Larry, Larry yeah. is one of the people helped me get my start yeah. in the business. So I still feel like a drummer once I'm, I'm mixing. I still feel like I'm part of the band because the drummer has to look at the bass player. This he has to be the, the pulse. You the know, glue, e the everything. foundation. So I, I still feel that I, f I feel like that person. I'm drumming. I'm right there in mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's just an in instinct thing. You know. Um, 
I've, I don't call myself a technical person. It's, I call myself a street mixer, really, because mm -hmm. it's all just, it's just a reactive thing. I've yeah. never been a guy that was all into frequencies and, oh, that's this, 10K, 8K. I wasn't that type of guy. I was all yeah. just so all field, ears. Field yeah, it's a field thing. thing. Yeah, Total I mean, just field just a foot, no, he can do that stuff, Herb. I mean, oh, I Neil, Neil, has the, yeah, <laughs> Neil has the gifts to do it. But, but, but oftentimes, people in that chair, which is, that chair mm -hmm. is held, like yourself, some mm -hmm. of the best in the business, mm -hmm. Invariably, intuition, feel, mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. being open to those mistakes and that disruptive right. stuff, that has right. been a consistent theme amongst the best in the game. And yes. so, so you stay in that space. Most definitely. And it, it informs your right. mixes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm visual, too. I mean, I'm, I always think about when I'm mixing, I think about the video. Even though it's not there yet, I think mm. about the video. I think about everything, you know. So. Um, I think watching a lot of cartoons has made my, my imagination go uh, being a, you know, looney tunes, I remember you, you know? used to, I remember <laughs> you used to even color code your, the console right, tape so right. your vocals were red, your, yeah. your, uh, your drums were blue or black, I can't remember. My, um, my drums are black, bass is blue, yeah. keyboards are green, synths are, it can be aqua, whatever, um, uh, my, my guitars are orange, backgrounds are purple, lead vocals are red. Um, horns are brown. I just said, did I say that right? Yeah. Horns are brown. Yeah. And, and I got that from the late, great Tavi Mote. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I, wow. I just found out that Tavi passed. I, yeah. I, 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 I didn't know that. Craig Burbage told it's me. It's been a couple of years now. I didn't know that. Yeah. He's one of the first people yeah. I met when I moved here. Hmm. He was, he was my mentor. What's kind of funny, Herb, is... Is that right? He's my mentor. I yeah. didn't know that. He, yeah. he had major gifts. Some of the records he did with Lil Silas, a uh, uh, close mm -hmm. friend of Herb's and mine, another, uh, our mentor. Yeah. Um, those were great, great yeah. records. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get out of Atlanta and get to L.A., and he's trying to get out of L.A. into Atlanta. It's mm -hmm. like, I mean, we missed each other by a few right. years, but it makes a better story to feel like we crossed in Texas. Right. But uh, <laughs> it brings up a point. A lot of you guys that really are serious about doing this for a living um, go anywhere, any place, any time. Uh, you 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 felt like like you had had better opportunity in Atlanta. There were there were the the scene was just coming along. Bobby Brown mm -hmm. was in town. He'd just done don't 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 be cruel, mm -hmm. and you just pulled up roots and went to Atlanta, yeah, man. I, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into because the only thing I knew about uh, ATL at that time was Cameo. Cameo had moved there. Yeah. And I think Ellie and Face had just moved, but I yeah, didn't know. Yeah, I really didn't know what was about yeah. to happen. So I, I, it was, I, the timing was beautiful. My yeah. first exposure to the big time was working with Cameo mm -hmm. when, when, I, when I was in Atlanta, and yeah. uh, Charlie Singleton, all those guys, Larry, right. Kevin. And, so as uh, you caught that wave, you caught mm -hmm. that wave. Mm -hmm. Were there a number of you guys, and just because you were there early? I think I was the, uh, you know, being that Ellie and Face had moved from here to, to there, right. and, and I knew them. Um, I think I was the only guy after them that moved from here to there. Uh, so at that yeah. point in time, they were they were importing people from Atlanta from LA to fly in and do things mm, like, like John yeah. Gas and people right. like that. Dave Way, Dave yeah. Way used to come through used a lot. To fly in, yeah. But but Neil's Neil's like, I guess you and Alvin and mm -hmm. a couple of guys like that yeah, were the original Alvin, guys. Me, Alvin, uh, Alvin Spice. Now it's Alvin Spice is a guy out there now called Vernon Mungo. Yeah, he Vern. came up un under me. He's doing some great things. So uh, Leslie, Leslie Brathwaite. Leslie Brathwaite. Yeah, I can't forget about Leslie. Man, no. he. Yeah, after I left, he just took the town we, over. We need to yeah. ask Leslie. I think one of the first sessions he assisted on was with me when I I went down and couldn't find a studio in Dallas. Said I could use his studio. Okay, it probably was. And Leslie yeah. was. Uh, uh, I know he assisted for me, but I don't know if that was one of the first times. But you could tell then he had it. You oh know? yeah. What were What were the early records and what did you learn in that time period being there and sort of catching the wave of a, a movement to that? You know, the early, I, early records was working with, um, with uh, Ellie's wife at the time, uh, Pebbles, mm -hmm. and she had a label mm -hmm. out there. I can't remember the name right, right now. It might have been called Savvy Records. It was. Okay. And uh, I worked with a couple, a couple of her artists that were out there at the time and um, kind of cutting my teeth through that and first met uh, Organized Noise. Mm. But the first thing I worked on out, out there was, was the Bobby Brown record. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got out there. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was here. And matter of fact, Lul called me uh, for that. He was doing a record here, Bobby, and he said um, he, he needed an engineer to come down and finish this, this record for him. And it was a 
studio, I don't know if you remember the studio, right off Sunset. It was right by Sunset in La Cienega. It's gone now, but it was a really great studio because I remember the, stu the speakers were was great. It, uh, the Suma, was it? Suma, yeah. Rick, it was Rick Suma. Stevens' studio it was before Suma, Rick. Right. Yeah. I, I, that was my first time I there. Lot, I did a lot of work there when I first moved to mm -hmm. LA. Great sounding room, too. Yeah. And yeah. I think they used the uh, Perot amps there. And, Great sounding room, I couldn't man. Tell you. I remember yeah. their, their, the tech guy they had. My mm. assistant there was a guy named Nick Vadia. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Now, like, wow. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you did Bobby at Suma or yeah. did you go to Atlanta? And do I started Bobby at Suma. Ah. And then he, he wanted me to come down to at Atlanta. Gotcha. So I went down there and finished some record. I forgot what the record was now, but finished some record with him there. And um, That was at Soundscape. Yeah, Soundscape. Matter of fact, I went to Tom. Was it Tom? Not Tom. What was the guy? This place John, we John Merritt? Not the oh, first Tom place. Tom Wright. Tom Wright. I went there. That was Cheshire. the first place that I ever yeah. worked at was Cheshire. Great man. Right. Great I was doing man. some stuff there. And uh, yeah. I was just cool. talking to TK uh, a couple of days ago about uh, Tom, and we, we all mm. got our start at Cheshire through yeah. Tom. Right. Was it through that savvy relationship that led to the TLC stuff? No, savvy came a little later. I'm sorry. Savvy, the, the timeline. I'm messing the timeline up. Um, it was to Bobby Brown stuff. I was working with him because he had just formed a new label for the M MCA thing oh, he right, had. Right, right. That was right, right after right. Don't Be Cruel. He was on a Do Don't Be Cruel tour. Right. And he was starting a brand new record, and he had a brand new label. And um, I was doing his his record. I was doing a couple of tracks on his his record, mixing a couple of tracks on his his record. And after I finished with him, he wanted me to to stay there. Mm. And so I said, well, there's nothing going on in L.A. right now. It was so it was so competitive here. And so I said, let me get out of here and mm -hmm. go somewhere new. So I tried it. Um, I was only pulled to stay for about three months. Mm -hmm. That ended up staying, you know, for mm -hmm. so 12 years later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you stayed 12 years? 12 oh, years, time yeah. flew by. 12 years. And after working with Bobby, then I got into the whole LaFace camp thing. And mm -hmm. uh, I met Organized Noise. and um, Rico and Rico Sleepy, and, those are two and, talented and, people. Yeah, man. they were just starting out. And they were doing some stuff for, for, for Pebbles label, so the Savvy Records. And uh, after that, um, got reintroduced with L.A. because he knew me out, out here. Sure. And then after I was working with Pebbles for a while, he said, hey, why don't you come do some stuff with me? And worked on uh, TLC's, it was a Christmas record that they were, they were working on. And uh, did that. And then after they did their Christmas record, then we started working on their their brand new record, which was crazy, sexy, cool, mm. and uh, small little record. Yeah, you know, Water small falls. record. Yeah, ten Water. albums. By the way, yeah. we forgot to mention that he he did win the Grammy for. Did we say that he won the Grammy for uh, for Hey Ya? No. Yeah, yeah. It was for the album. Yeah, for, for the, the album, the album yeah. of the year for yeah. Love Below. Speaker box. Speaker box. Yeah. So you take all that stuff you've done and, and then moving it forward, like you did Travis Barker's solo record? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relatively recently. Correct? Yeah. It came out about three, four months ago. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. How mm -hmm. was, what was it like working with that him? That was great. Travis is, he's the most coolest laid great, back yeah. guy. He's, I, he's a great apologies guy. Apologies to Travis. I think I called him Barkley. I no, Charles Barker. Barkley yeah, in my Barker. Barker. Yeah, he's, he's one of the greatest guys. Oh, cool. He really is. Cool. Neil, like, like when you start a mix, I know you're very hook oriented. D d describe the process, like 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 you, you pull up the session. Mm -hmm. What what what's the creative process from there? I pull it up. I, I listen to it for a little while. Uh, being that mostly I work from the house now, mm -hmm. I'll walk around and hear it from different rooms. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. Then I'll after that I'll break it down. Just bring up the drums and hear hear that. That's that's my process. The, the drums and the bass is my is my whole process really. Mm -hmm. Hearing that, seeing how how that works, um, and then from from there I bring in every everything else and kind of build it and paint that picture. And because I've I've already heard the vocals already, so I just build it up from from there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all about the hook too. After that, how how the hook comes into play. You know, with all that, and then after that, the lead vocals come much much later. But I've heard some somebody uh, one one mixer told me that he he works from the vocals first, and I've never heard that process before. Um, but I'm always a drum bass guy first. That definitely comes first. Mm. When I work with Take Six, I tend to work with the vocals first. <laughs> Good call. That's part of your wisdom. And and, <laughs> and um, um, Manny American on the show said that he likes to find the part of the song with the highest energy level, work mm -hmm. there, and, and then work, work 
down the energy scale. Mm. Do you start with a hook, or do you start at the beginning of the song, or or it, it varies from song to song? I start from from the hook. Yeah, I do. do I'll, I'll leave the hook, hook in 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 loop, because to, to me that's you know mm -hmm. you find all the best parts there. You know, then I work my way way back. Definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes I work from the vamp too. Some sometimes. That you makes know. sense. Yeah. Got to find like the highest peak. Mm. Work my, my way my way back. And 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 um, a, 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 I don't know. When I was learning how to engineer, I was told that the the okay engineers boost, but the great engineers cut frequencies. Mm. Did you ever hear that when you were starting yeah, yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, and, and know it. Is I, there I any truth to that? Yeah, and, and I've learned that from from a great another great in, engineer, um, Alan Myerson. Oh, Alan's yeah, my hero. Yeah. Cutting frequencies is the whole is, a, is I think is the key to to mixing. A lot of guys don't don't back in the day didn't think about cutting. They thought mm -hmm. about just okay, it um, if things are getting crowded, let, let me add more highs. But no, you you cut frequencies. You know what mm -hmm. I mean to try to get things out of out of the way. You know what I mean. Um, it's like like with low end. Sometimes it becomes so crowded and muffled. Sometimes you got to cut it. You know, and 300k is usually where I like to start from. Then I work my way from there and sweep it around a little bit, you know, as far as like the low. I and mean, if it gets muddy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You mean, you mean 300 cycles, not 300K? 300 hertz. I'm sorry. 300 hertz. He's, I'm sorry. I said 300. I'm like starting to feel <laughs> my bad. inadequate with my hearing here. I'm like, man, I could only hear 20K. I, 300 hertz. My, my wonder bad. wonder he sounds so good. Like, <laughs> what am I missing here? <laughs> That school you went to in Hollywood was one hell of a school, oh, man. Oh, yeah, the one in North Hollywood. That they, that That's they, where we're having mixed Yeah, they class. tore it down, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody's like, 300K? Oh, my God. No, 300 hertz. Let me ask you this. Do you, do you um, because you, I, I feel like you and I think so much alike sometimes, do you think of certain frequencies uh, as, as adding or subtracting from from the process in terms of energy level, like like you said, 300, uh, you, you pull that out. If you pull too much out, you pull some of the warmth out. Mm -hmm. And and I always think of like 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 the lower frequencies, like 40 and 50, is like power, you mm -hmm. know. And I think of like 1K is is energy and and aggressiveness. If if you don't have enough one or 2K in your mix, it can get a little a little too pretty, but mm -hmm. those frequencies hurt your ears when you turn mm -hmm. it up. And I've always felt when you turn a mix up, it shouldn't just get louder, it should have you make a decision real quick about mm -hmm. leave the room or stay. Right, right. I, I, I don't Some, like Sometimes it's good to add that 2K because it, uh, um, uh, I always thought it adds fights in, in, in clubs, you know. Some frequencies, it changes people's Say that again, it adds fights in clubs? Oh yeah, people fight from <laughs> certain it. frequencies. <laughs> it, you know, that's, that's why you see some people, you know, in the uh, mosh pit. Because it's those frequencies sometimes, it just gets you so riled, that guitar riled up. guitar frequency. Gets you riled up and you just want to start punching the elbow and just go crazy. A it's, good it's, record. Yeah, that's just the frequencies that make people do that. It's, it's just, it's, it's emotional, you know what I mean? Uh, that's so cool. And then I've always admired the way that um, the way that you use effects. You you, mm -hmm. you don't use them to hear them. You use them to create a feeling or or amplify yeah. something that that's already part of the process mm -hmm. for you. And it, and so you would use like some of your records. You use like just milliseconds uh, mm -hmm. decay times on reverbs, and mm -hmm. then and then. Then you then you use a lot more yeah. delays than reverbs. Are you still? I'm more of a delay person than a re reverb person because I think the uh, delay adds that that magic. Some sometimes just to have a a slap, you know, a slight slap, or um, I guess I, I think of those as it adds a um, dimension to a to a track. Just hearing mm -hmm. that uh, delay at the at a in a song. I guess I think of a song in it's depth mm -hmm. rather than some people just lay it out flat like like mm -hmm. a painting but to me everything is is, is mm -hmm. you know it's that type of thing it's like a 3d 4d type yeah. thing to I, me. i've always thought of of delay and reverb as is my front to rear front to rear pan pan pot like mm -hmm. the more reverb i put on it the further back it goes mm -hmm. which sometimes isn't a isn't a bad thing it can, it can be a good thing mm -hmm. and um 
In terms of panning, how, how does panning fit into your creative process? Oh, panning is definitely crucial because as a as a kid, I used to sit in my room and listen to all types of records on like on head headphones, mm -hmm. and I used to hear things going. Past. I think maybe that's what shaped me into a mix in engineer. Um, I used to listen to how things were panned, like the guitars were here and something was playing on over here, and then you hear something, a cowbell over here. And so I think that's what um, shaped me. Because you know? of your, your, your visual, uh, what would the word be her, acuity, your, 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 the, the fact that you rely on, on your visual senses to hear, um, do you do you do you see the panning? Do you, do you, you mentioned like the video? Do you see the the, the pan as a, as a as a as a visual process as a, as opposed to an audible audio process? That to me, that's not visual. That to me is is, is audible. It's an audio thing. Yeah, just to hear that thing going somewhere. Some sometimes I'll put something in the mix where you may not hear it till three years later. I I, mm. I love that type of mixing. Me where too. Like I layers want, of an Yeah, I, I don't want everything to be out there for you the first listen. I, yeah. I want you because I used to. I mean, till this day, I'll go back and listen to old songs from the '70s as, as a kid, mm. and I listen to it now. I've never noticed that. Just mm. one little thing. Um, there was a Shaka Khan song I, I heard the other day, and she was doing this ad lib, and I never noticed it. It was way in, in the back. And I, I played it over and over again. So how, sometimes I, I'll get mad. So I never heard that before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and my wife would be in the car and say, "Why you keep rewinding that? You, you hear that part? You hear that?" You know, I drive her crazy sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of your wife, <laughs> tell Cherokee hello. Her Cherokee. and I yeah. love her to death. Yeah. Uh, she's great. Yeah. Um, in terms of the education that you got going to school, how do you how do you feel that contributed? To, to the process of, of you becoming you? Did, 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 it, did it shorten the time you felt it, it took you to get to where you wanted to be? Did it make it easier? Did, did you have to unlearn mm -hmm. some things and learn mm -hmm. some things? How, how did, like, like I get the question mm -hmm. about school and the importance of school. I, I, I know one of the big importance uh, things that school does is it allows you access to an internship. You go to school, yeah. pay all this money, and now you get right. to work free. But how, how, did, how did you use your, because you, you, you say you, mix, you mix like a street mixer, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of going to school, but mm -hmm. yet I, I know you have serious technical skills because mm -hmm. I, I, we've worked together. Mm -hmm. how, how do you balance the education part and what, what benefit and what advice would you have for our audience in terms okay. of education? I guess I have to be very careful with my words with that one because I think it's good for some but not good for others. If you're a school person, I was never a school person. You know, when I'm in school, I'm, my mind drifts off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm somewhere else. So mm -hmm. with, with me, um, I think that um, it's always better once you get in the actual studio. Once you're in the studio, that's when, that's that's when, when, school, that's when school starts, really. Mm -hmm. To me, going to the actual school is good for some, but to me, when you get into that, that studio, when you become an intern or a, an assistant, that's when the real, real school starts. Yeah, if you, once that's, you get you know, to watch Alan Myers or Otavi or cats like yeah, that work, then... Yeah, so that's when I really learned. That's, that, to me, that was the real, that was the real mm -hmm. deal. That was the real world. So what you learn in school, I don't know if I applied that to what what happened because you become a deer in headlights once you get in, in that room with the Tavi Mote or Alvin, Alan Myerson. Or, Alan's been known you know, to be a little tough on yeah, assistants. You know, so, and um, and some guys were great, but it's just that you're just nervous when you get inside of a room mm -hmm. with, with, with the guy and you see all those, you know, all those, that big board and all those modules and you just, you know, you forget everything you learned, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. I just think it's good for some, but not. It wasn't for me. It was cool, but. Would you say it'd be an accurate statement to say that, that being around great mixers is sometimes more important than than than, than a formal, organized educational process? Yeah, it's really. I, I would I would say so, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Because I, I I didn't go to school. I just. Mm -hmm. I went from playing in a band to engineering mm -hmm. the next day, and uh, mm -hmm. I ruined a lot of records that I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could give people their money back or yeah. call me, guys. I'll give you a free mix. I mean, gosh. Um, but I think some guys go to go to school and they still ruin mixes.
remixes. So yeah. that's just the learning curve, man. Yeah, just just to, just to, I don't want to beat this to death, but but mm -hmm. s schools nowadays I think are so much better than they were 20 years ago because they mm -hmm. you do have access to studios and mm -hmm. the people teaching come from a real world application. So it's 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 uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's. Uh, um, the best thing would be to find a great engineer who would let you hang around him for a year at his studio mm -hmm. and instead of mixing teaches you everything he knows but mm -hmm. if you can't find that scenario a school might yeah. be your second best choice and then right. uh, i know for me um i had huge gaps in my knowledge like i uh, to this day, I couldn't align a tape machine if I had to, right. nor do I want to, because <laughs> I never had to learn it, you know? Yeah, we have to get... Yeah. You know what, let me, um, let, let's bring in a few questions from our corner office for, for <coughs> our man, Neil. Okay. Drew, what you got? Cool. We got a bunch of questions for you, Neil. Mm -hmm. um, first one, we'll go from uh, Dylan Dresdow. You guys may have heard of him. Okay. Dave, you're awake. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I love Dylan. <laughs> um, he wants to know your favorite uses for the wedge unit. Oh man! Wow! Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take my that, we favorite move on. uses. So Does he mean my favorite program or? Yeah, I don't know. Favorite? I thought that maybe that's an inside thing. So you guys oh, my favorite uses. Oh wait, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, I think I'm finally getting the question now. Um, I love to use it on synths, and because um, that th those wed those wedges have a certain sound to them. And For those that good. don't know, yeah. that's a pretty esoteric piece of gear. The to wedge, it. yeah, the wedge is a $99 piece of gear that I think I probably made famous. Um, oh, you did make it famous. <laughs> uh, it's made by Alesis, and I don't think many people used them in a real studio. I think a lot of people would probably use them at, at home or whatever, mm -hmm. but I always like to find the, the quirky things mm -hmm. to use in, in the mm -hmm. studio. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's a 99, well, it might be cheaper now, but I know when I bought it, it was $99. And I bought three of them, and I used to use them in the studio, and everybody used to come and visit me and go, what the hell is that, yeah, you know what I mean? So, but uh, yeah, I, they're really great on um, on keyboards and you know, and background vocals. Cool, oh, cool. Background. Um, this is for both you guys, Dave and uh, Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your favorite tricks for creating movements in your mixes, for example, other than using volume or panning, or panning automation? Maybe a phaser on hi hats or other modulation on other instruments from uh, from Paul Patterson. You want to try it? Or you want me to try it? No, I, I love the phaser thing because I used to love. I mean, back in the day, I used to love to use flangers and phasers on my hat. You know, my hats. That was a great yeah, thing. I loved, I loved it. I used to yeah. use the even tide over I used there. I love to do that. I, I haven't done that lately. So just hearing that question makes me want to go back and start doing that again. Yeah, uh, Ron yeah. Fair got me back into using the. Uh, Instant flanger on uh -huh. on hi hats on we did it on buttons a lot of songs. Oh okay. Yeah. To me, um, first of all, you, you have to define what movement means. I yeah. Mean, and 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 when I think just like you, when I think movement, I think the the, the high frequency rhythmic information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've noticed nine times out of ten. Have you ever had somebody walk in the session and go, did you slow the mix down? Yeah. And, and that's mm -hmm. an instant cue that, mm -hmm. that the hi-hat's not right. loud enough. Or some, so you, some percussive some that was in there high, yeah. is not high enough. So, yeah, so, um, yeah I think um, um, I told the story once of I was working with Shakira, and I can't remember how many hours we spent on a, it was either a marimba part or a hi-hat part. <laughs> because we love low-end, you and mm -hmm. I love Mm -hmm. Low end information so much. Sometimes we we ignore the poor little guys up there at 300k. Mm -hmm. Got another one, Drew? Have you ever used a, Have you ever used a twizzle uh, flanger? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, explain, I'll explain that to you later. <laughs> Go ahead, Drew. We got one more from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Thomas J. Kobrick. Uh, the Franz Ferdinand album is one of my all time favorites. Can you talk about how he achieved that gritty sound? Any special techniques or processing? Oh man. Wow, that was yeah, a good record. That was that was I that's think a gritty record. A couple of those mixes. I don't know if all both of my mixes made it, but I think at least one of them made it. And uh I think, you know, that's that weird. record was all I, about I had Franz Ferdinand <laughs> yeah. written down. I love that record. That record was all about just the mid mid range. Some sometimes when dealing with those types of groups, the mid mid range is, is key to a lot of things. Um it's that seven hundred, you know, around there just cranking it a little bit a little bit more wow yeah so 
that was a that was a fun fun record. Yeah, cool. Definitely. How's your uh, you ready to pitch a few balls his way? Can I ask you one question? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To this day, I don't know what mid range means. What 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 mm -hmm. what what do you consider mid range like? 600 to 2k or what, what's your definition of what mid-range is i would say yeah it's about sometimes it's five six seven around that range to, to me it is yeah but i guess it depends on your ear because we all hear differently so yeah. it's different because because i may hear it as mid-range and you may hear it as something totally different so and that's the beautiful thing about all this it's just a perception you know yeah i wonder if there's a formal definition for what low mm. low mid mid mm. Yeah. High. I wonder if there's a formal definition for all that because I throw those terms out and I don't know what they mean. They just—it's just a feeling to me. It's just, yeah. just that mid. Just you know, it's there. It's like the low, low Have mid. Have you too. felt? Uh, I'm sorry, Herb, let, me, let me get this out because I think this is important. Have you felt that 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 mid range has has and the use of mid range in mixing has changed in the last three or four years? Have you felt like like mm -hmm. I noticed now? I want to hear more more of that. Yeah, seven to 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 two k in my mixes people than I did a couple of years ago. Are you noticing mm -hmm. a feeling of that? Yeah, people don't use it as as much. I don't think, but I think it brings out that edge. To me, that's that's the that's the uh, that's the attack of the song. I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that we're listening to so much music now on earbuds and mm -hmm. laptops that you need a little more of that to mm -hmm. get. And then car 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 systems always are shy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I always got to crank that mid range up a little little bit more. After definitely. you do the car in, in, test. Oh, the car test, yeah, definitely. That's interesting. So I'm not crazy. Well, I could mm. still be crazy, but at oh, least. No. <laughs> I'm sure you so can. While, so while Dave gets ready for Batter's Box, tell us about Fulton Yard Unlimited. What's that? Oh, yeah, Fulton Yard Unlimited is my production company. It's um, it's a crew of us, uh, me and me and my uh, partner, who's co-owner with me, Walter B. McKinney. Cool. We call him Walt B., Walt Boogie, whatever you want to call him. And we formed a company where I used to always get... Um, calls like little messages on Facebook guys asking me to help them out you know and stuff so I called my partner one day said why don't we just you know help help talented guys out and bring them up and um, form, a, form a crew and try to infiltrate the business you know mm -hmm. so right now I got about four guys signed under me as co-producers co cool. um, like Black City Music and there's Kent and there's a, a guy named Fred Card and uh, I think I have a great team, and we cover everything from R&B to rock to electro to, you know, all types you, of stuff. You've always yeah. had really varied, varied yeah. tastes. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm a you know, Charlie you Parker one day. A Nelly Furtado cut. Right. Nelly Furtado cut back on her album called Loosed. Yeah. It's Loosed or Loosed, like that, yeah. I like that cut. Uh, yeah, you also called, worked on Lil Wayne, too, correct? Yeah, I just mixed a uh, song called President Carter oh, cool. on the Carter Three. Cool. Yeah. Now you ready to uh, catch a few of these pitches from Dave and yeah, Batters Box? Sure. Okay. All right, let's tee it up. There's okay. the graphic. And Neil Neil has um, has volunteered. I don't know how he's going to do this, guys, but I, I, I trust him. Neil's going to tell us uh, frequencies. I'm going I'm to name the sound. And we're going to make it about frequencies with Neil. Okay. Uh, maybe frequencies he tends to take out, frequencies he tends to add. Now, these aren't hard and fast rules, guys, so don't. These are these are things that he's seen over the years happen. Mm. Uh, don't do like me, make notes and go ruin the next ten records. I do. Vocals. Vocals. Lead vocal. Um, eight K. Love it. You add eight K. Yes. Okay. Uh, snares. Uh, I'll say one K. Our frequency. Eight oh eights. Eight oh eights. Ooh. Sometimes nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. glad you said that. I agree. It's an eight oh if it's an eight oh eight, if you want yeah. more turn the damn thing right. up. Don't get an equalizer. <laughs> Acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar. Um believe it or not, it's five hundred K. Oh. Body is what I'm is what yeah. comes comes to mind. Background vocals. Uh I cut at sometimes between 200 and 300. Oh, okay. Uh, Hurts. That's <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> uh, pianos, and you can you can pick a Rhodes or acoustic, Piano. whatever you want. Let's say acoustic, because, um, let me see, I tend to, frequency-wise, 
2K. I just want to bring out the strings in the piano. Oh, okay. Let's see 2K. I want to bring out that. Perfect. Great. Pads. Pads. When I think of pads, I think about warmth. So sometimes nothing. Yeah, they can yeah. take over a mix yeah. real quick. Sometimes nothing, yeah. Uh, bass. Bass. I love 110 hertz, believe it or not. Wow. That's cool. Um, let's see. Regular kick drums. Um, As opposed to irregular kick drums, how did I say that? Herb? Regular kick drums, sometimes 90 hertz. Cool. Two and a half. Boost. Okay. <laughs> yeah, boost a tune. No, oh. boost tune. Cool. Half. Yeah, volume. Um, last one, uh, strings. Strings. I'm going to say, um, sometimes strings can be like vocals. So I'll just say 10K. Oh, yeah. cool. Lately, I started using Massive Passive, the 10K on strings, mm -hmm. the, the Massive Passive. I really okay. like I really like Yeah. Uh, really yeah. like that. Round of applause for Neil and Batters Man, Parks. That, that was the right. tightest one we've had. Neil, 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 Except Neil, for the one Neil. you did, her. Uh, the one I did that you did. I just teed them up. You hit them out of the park. <laughs> so, so I, I always say this to folks. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, sometimes I mean it. Sometimes I don't. I'm just kidding. But we come back, will you? Yes, most definitely. Yeah. Yes. We, we all have tightness stuff for right. for full disclosure. I used to manage your wife. You guys yeah. are great friends yeah, of ours. Yeah. Ten Jesus. years strong Ten, now. Uh, absolutely, yeah. incredible. That's great. Couple of, couple of New Years is New Years back. We watched uh, yeah. Cat Williams over at your house. We sure did, sure did. And, and she's a Neil. stunning artist and stunning lyricist right. on her own right. And yes, they have yeah. great kids that we love. So, right. uh, as just as a human, mm -hmm. you know, I've always said that there's an artist in you who mm -hmm. informs his mixes and stuff yeah. but as a person this is one of the best guys oh, ever. Great thank guy. you thank you good to have you bro thank you can i do a quick plug of course uh, please um please listen out for or watch out for uh earth and fire's new new single coming out in first week of november called guiding lights my team fulton yard unlimited uh did the first single for the greatest hits package 40th anniversary for earth and fire uh, coming out the uh, Greatest Hits package will be out in February, but the single will be out in the first week of November. Oh, great. Good yeah. deal. Well, when, the, when the whole thing comes out, will you come back and yeah. t talk a little bit about how Definitely. you did it? Well, Neil, man, I can't thank you enough. Um, uh, uh, I, I've had so many questions about so many records, and every time we see each other, it's just too many things going on to talk about some of those things, and you've always been very generous with your knowledge, and I, 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 the world thanks you for it. And, I know, I know our, uh, our viewers are, are really happy about the things they learned from you today, and I really appreciate that. Real quick, before you uh, take us home, remember, guys, get to uh, pensadosplace.tv. All the information about MixFest, November 12th, Los Angeles Recording School in their main theater. There you see uh, the information. Eric Valentine for the Q&A. Jean-Marie Horvat is going to talk about logic. You'll be able to mix with Dave, get stuff, gift bags. You know the whole drill. Student pricing, get there. The response has been incredible. We're gonna have a good time. Well, things are like like the format for the show. There's 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 kind of limitations as to what I can do in terms of showing people the process of mixing at the level that that that, that we work at. And the show is gonna give me an opportunity to spend however much time we need to really break down the process of of. Of, of, of how our brains work when we create a mix and when we when we do a mix, I'm actually do a, a mix in front of you. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and then part of the process is bring your laptops. There's going to be some things that you can that you can uh, play along with, and uh, I think it's just going to be a great a great great afternoon. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Going to be a lot of information that you can impart, and we're going to have fun talking to you about it. Take them home, Dave. Well, man. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm I'm still thinking about 20 things that Neil said. I got to go finish a mix, and I know mm -hmm. it's going to be better because I haven't sat down with Neil today. And um, uh, man, I'm just like I, like I, you know, we're friends, and I know Neil. But then I start thinking of some of these records, and they're like, holy cow! I mean, these are great records. Some of these records change the way we do music, the way our profession works. So anyway, uh, thanks again, Neil. And you guys, um, 
I'll see you next week.